I'm the deputy mayor of Oslo. I really, really believe in the freedom of speech. And my job in this city, in Oslo city, it, it's to create a society where people all the time can be, you know, confronted with differences. So, so they are able to, you know, change themselves with the information they get. And that's what he wasn't able to do. So I'm, I'm not mad at him. I pity him. I really do. You know, when the trial began, the spring of 2012, I was there a lot and people were like, why do you waste your time? Like, I'm not there to give him attention. I'm there because I am a politician in Oslo. It is my responsibility to learn what made him this way. How can I make sure that this never happens again? I'm 23 years old and I study law here in Tromsø, my hometown. I'm honestly quite excited about being able to study and being able to have an exam. So, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy with it actually. For me, the most important support was from my family and my brother especially because we have shared this thing and you know just talking about it every single day talking 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 being able to manage post-traumatic stress you need to own it and control it you need to be it's, it can't control you you need to control it you know I tried in the first year or so to just do exactly what I did before and this will not change me, this will not... But you know, it's, it's really about accepting that some things are changed. Accept that I will probably not get an A grade on any exam uh, in my life. I will probably not be able to work as long hours as I once thought I was going to do. So, um, a part of a week after I got elected as deputy mayor, I was interviewed by one of the largest newspapers in Norway. I told them that I wouldn't put Breivik in jail. I said that I would let him work for the immigrants just to show him that multicultural society is not a threat to him or anyone else. Slowly but steady, rebuilding trust in society and rebuilding myself. You know. If it's going to the theater, if, if it's being a part of the national day celebration with all the people at one place, all that kind of stuff that seemed like regular stuff then is not that now. But then again, I will show up there anyway, and I will be there, and it will be better than last year. And last year was better, uh, was better than the year before that, you know. And the year before that was terrible, but then again, I was there. I should probably not play football. I have a really bad arm, and of course I have, still have some bullet things in my head. I shouldn't play football, it's the wrong thing to do, but then again, for me, it's a symbol of, you know, yes, I probably shouldn't, but then again, I will because it's my life. I choose to do it, you know. It's a natural part of being from where I'm from, I think, to, to be in touch with nature. I mean, it doesn't seem that way with my ankle socks now, and you know, but but uh, this is not Norwegian cold. It's just a bit windy. It's, it's a perfect place for for dating, actually. That's my secret dating spot, so you can't tell anyone. <laughs> it's actually true as well. <laughs> I really want to set a footprint of myself, to do something that's gonna stick 
My dream is to be able to make my environment, wherever that is, a better place for people. You know, it's almost six years ago, and a lot of people have already forgotten it. For me, it's about the history and our responsibility on behalf of the history. Uh, I bring people to Utea because I believe that this is an important place where something horrible happened. But that horrible story is supposed to make us stronger on behalf of our values. Vi har fortsatt rystet over det som traff oss, men vi gir aldri opp våre verdier. Vårt svar er mer demokrati, mer åpenhet og mer humanitet.